Let's pray again. <laughs> ah, Lord, we, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? Sending your son to die for sinners, to redeem to rescue fallen man. What have you done, Lord, that we're here today to sing your praises when once we went we went our own way like sheep and once we talked our own praises when once, Lord, we, we didn't care, we didn't know, we didn't pay any attention. We didn't pay any attention to you. We didn't pay any attention to what you did at Calvary. We were ignorant. We were far off. We wonder, what have you done, Lord, to put away sin by the sacrifice of yourself? What have you done to bear our own sins in your body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness? What have you done? What have you done to be a sacrifice for us? We exclaim this morning, How blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. How blessed is the man to whom you impute righteousness without works. What have you done, Lord, to gone ahead of us, before us, to make a way into the holiest? To make a way, Lord, that we should be, that we should be with you. These mysteries, Lord, we see. These mysteries, we see them dimly. We see them really. Lord, we are glad to be on your side. We are glad, Lord, uh, to be with your people. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. I thank you for these dear saints of God. Thank you for this testimony you've raised up. Thank you, Lord, for... With the working of the Spirit, the working of your finger, the working of your hand, the working of your arm. And thank you, Lord, for your saints of God. Lord, you've, you've called us saints, not sinners. You've called us uh, sheep, not goats. You've called us friends, not enemies. You've called us sons, not cursed, but blessed. We wait on you today. Your eyes are upon you today. We can't see enough. We can't tell enough, talk enough. We cannot sing your praises worthily. And so are thankful, Lord, to be right here, right now, and ask your blessing. Amen. You know, you've, you've prayed for me, and I feel so unworthy. You've thought about me, I feel so unworthy. I, I don't know. It's just uh, the love of the Spirit. That's the phrase that Paul uses in Romans 15. You know, you've prayed me down here, and I tremble. I mean, it's like a dream. I, we never thought, Terry and I never thought, we never thought. We never imagined it could be, and uh, we just long for, we, I don't know, you know how it is, you can imagine how it is, we, we, just, we ask God, would you give us one more trip together, <laughs> and we didn't think there was any way, not to mention San Antonio, and uh, we wanted to see James and Bethany and see them married like this and live a little with them and to see their house and to see their hearts. And uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to see you all too. <laughs> I am thankful to know some of you. I, uh, I just... Uh, only the day can make us really appreciate one another, know one another, enjoy one another. You know, you know more about me, and I don't know you, and I'm looking for the day when, when we'll know one another and know God, know the Lord Jesus as we're known. 
I hope you'll excuse us for not staying around afterwards for the meal. We feel like at least right now we ought to we ought to climb in the car and head back north, not presume, but uh, be on our way. And I uh, I know you'll understand. And uh, so I'd like to I like to bring uh, call your attention this morning to a. A text that God has made so real to me, and uh, I'd like to try to underline it, I'd like to magnify it to you. There's so God has given us so much to say. He's given us so much to tell. He's given us so much, and how can how can we say it? How can we tell it all? What can we say? What little part can be imparted? And I believe God has quickened this verse to me. And so I invite you to Revelation chapter 14, and let's read this paragraph. (laughs) Revelation 14, verse 9. Then another angel, a third one, followed them, the first two that is, saying with a loud voice. Some things ought to be said with a loud voice, hadn't they? Loud and clear. If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives a mark in his forehead or in his hand, he will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented, not might be, but he will be tormented, with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. There's no more clear verse on eternal punishment than this. And they have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. That is, yeah, you could sum it up in those who serve sin. Verse 12, here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And now verse 13 is what we're after. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors or their deeds follow with them. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. You, you all have prayed for me that I, might, that I might not die but live. And uh, the end's not over yet, but it looks like, it looks like I'm going to die and not live. It looks like the Lord's prayer is overriding your prayers. He prayed that those whom the Father had given him, where he is, can be his glory. And so what can we do? What can we do as we think about one another, as we think about what can we do but just say, Lord, ultimately, your will be done, not mine. And that's where we're at. Look 
at the certainty of this blessing. It is a beatitude. You know, it's kind of like the beatitudes in, in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the pure, blessed are the persecuted, and so on. It's kind of like that. There's some beatitudes that we don't think much about, like blessed Matthew, or Matthew 11 verse 6. Blessed are, is the man who doesn't stumble over me. We don't think much about that. But here's another one of these Beatitudes, and it says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. And, uh, first of all, think of the certainty, please, of this blessing, as indicated by these words at the beginning of verse 13. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write. It's solid enough, you can write it down. Yeah, it's certain enough that you can write it down, and it says that this is a voice from heaven. Well, when you, when you come face to face with death, you want that, right? You want, a, you want a voice from heaven. It doesn't matter what parents tell you. It doesn't matter what pastor tells you. It doesn't matter what wife tells you. It doesn't matter what some pope or president would tell you. You need a word from God. You need, uh, you need a word, uh, it says a voice from heaven. You, you, need, to, you need to have his, you, uh, uh, you need to hear a voice from heaven, that is, from uh, a realm outside of this earth, from another realm. Man's words, man's comforts, they will not do as you're thinking about headed out into eternity, being launched out into eternity, being launched out into an area you've never been before, and you know it's going to last forever and ever, you, you need a word from God. You need to make sure you've heard the word from God. You've heard a voice from heaven. Jesus said, He who hears my voice over and over again shall not die but live. And... Uh, so I am thankful at such a time as this to have a certain word. You know, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. They seem so stable. They seem so sure. They seem so solid. What can cancel? A lot of, a lot of events on earth can get canceled. Yeah, but you wouldn't think heaven and earth could, but it will. It'll pass away with a great noise and a fervent heat. But... Uh, Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God, the word of Jesus, the word of God, will, it'll not pass away. It says that the scripture cannot be broken. A lot of things, you buy them, and you think this is permanent. This is, uh, this is, uh, this, is this wood's been treated. This uh, car is gonna, supposed to last for so many miles, and this thing will not break. You know, you get a tool, and here it breaks before 10 days are up. And, uh, but the scripture cannot be broken. And so don't you love the word of God today? You know, when you come, brethren, uh, when you come to face death, I mean, it, you, you know you're going to die. You're all in the same boat that I'm in. There's nothing special about me. We are, I mean, uh, yes, I'm a dying man. Indeed, speaking to dying men. But uh, I'm telling you, nothing special about me. Not at all. But there is something special when you're tied to the track and you hear the train coming. And I can tell you that when you're facing death, you are going to be so thankful that you know all the Bible you know. You're going to be so thankful you've memorized every promise. You're going to be so thankful you know all the Bible you know and you've hidden it all in your heart. And you can say this verse and that verse is my intimate friend. You come down to the end, and you uh, cannot believe the way that you're attacked, the way you're assailed, the way that you can, the fears can creep in. How? I mean, uh, I mean, it's all been casual before. It's all I, I know that I, my life. What is your life? It's but a vapor. What is it? A vapor that appears for a little while and then passes away. You know that, and I have thought I have known that verse in James. But yet you don't know it the way you ought to know it. You don't feel it the way you ought to feel it. Like one person said, one thing about cancer, you've got a chance to think. You've got a chance to prepare for death and for eternity. 
and so you uh, you can be thankful for every everything you know about the Bible, every every all the knowledge of God you've got, all the knowledge of Christ you've got, all the appreciation appreciation of Calvary you've got, and Jesus dying to put away your sins. When you come to the end, all you you ask, Lord, do I really know you? Do I really know you? Have I really been rescued? Have I really been redeemed? Do I really have a saving knowledge of the living God? Do I really, are my sins really gone? And I'll tell you what, brethren, my dear brothers and sisters, you can be so thankful for all the assurance you've got, all the assurance you've accumulated that God has put in your soul. You can be so thankful when you come to the end. And I'll tell you what, brethren, I'm going to boast in Jesus Christ. I've had very little, very little of that. Very little. I remember there's one night when fear set in on me, a great horror of darkness. It wasn't long after I'd been diagnosed. It was a dark night. But I'll tell you, God's, <laughs> God's consolations are great. And that word in John 17, and like I just quoted to you, where Jesus said, Father, I pray that those whom you've given me be with me where I am. Things like that just come in melting over your soul, and you just, the fears are melted, the demons are chased, <laughs> and you boast in Christ and go on. Come on, let's go. And... Uh, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. I'm telling you. I'm telling you there's certainty here. And uh, that's great. We can, we as Christians can face the king of terrors. Or the shout. Uh, the doctor, just the other day, the GI doctor, he said, here's your situation. And he said, you don't have long. And I said, do I have three months? He said, no. He shook his head, no. And I said, I'm a Christian. I've been saved. My sins are forgiven. And I said, heaven is all right. <laughs> Immortality is shouting ground, isn't it? I'm looking at the majestic ones. I'm looking at kings. The Lord bless you all. Let's look at a second heading. And uh, that is the irony of this beatitude. It says, blessed are those, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. But blessed are the dead? It's a blessing you're telling me to die? It doesn't sound right, does it? It doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, we didn't want to die. My wife didn't want me to die. No, we don't want one another to die. The saints don't want one another to die. The loved ones don't want us to die. What do you mean it's a blessing? What, how can that be? It doesn't seem like it's a blessing. And the Bible says that it's an enemy. You better believe it. It is an enemy. It, is, it doesn't fit. I mean, here we've been created in the image of God, right, David? We've been created in the, and our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. And... Uh, and uh, and it seems we're so special. And uh, how can uh, uh, you all are on the younger side, or you wouldn't been able to stand out there like that in the heat? And uh, and all of the strength that you have, all of the skill that you have, all of the you know, I mean, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and here all of a sudden death comes on, and I mean. Uh, comes on so suddenly. Up until just a few years ago, I felt like I was still 30. But now suddenly, God, God, I mean, ultimately shoots his arrows at me. And uh, the health is gone. 
and it comes and consumes that which is precious to us like a moth. Our health is gone. Things don't coordinate anymore. Things don't work anymore. I can't lift up my head anymore. I can't sit at the desk anymore the way I want. I can't sing anymore the way I want. I can't give it the, the strength I'd like. I, you know, you tend to think when a guy is sick, he's going to be able to read his Bible more. And he's going to be able to pray more. Forget it. It doesn't work that way. Everything's less. Death is an enemy. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you better use your strength. You better use your youth. Every bit of it while you've got it. You better make it count. You better make it count now. If you know it's right, if you know it's right, you better do it now. And uh, get at it. Don't postpone. Do not procrastinate. Don't do it. Don't say there's another day. Don't say there's greener grass on the other side. Don't be fooled like that. It's the devil's lie. Death is an enemy. And, uh, and so we die. Yeah. Men of God go down. Women of God go down. The saints of God go down. Why do they go down? It seemed like they got so much to contribute. They got so much to share. You got so much to share. God has built. He built you, Mark. He's building a man of God. He's not troubled to do it. He's not worried about it. He's not anxious about it. He's not weak when he comes to building another man. And so he'll take you down. And it seems like all that accumulated wisdom, all that accumulated knowledge, it just goes down. And it seems to be so wasted. It seems like poured out milk, spilled wine. But I'm telling you, I say again, God, he's not weak. And he's not bother him again to build another man. And, uh, and he delights in it. It seems like he delights in the process as much as the end. And so here you are, called to walk with God. <laughs> called to walk with God. On oh, the face of the earth, in the midst of the devil's camp, right here to sing the songs of Zion in the, in the enemy's camp. What a privilege is ours. What a privilege to share the word of God. What a privilege to hold forth the truth of God in the midst of a, a world of lies. Lies. We have got so much truth. You've got so much truth, dear brethren. You be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Good stewards. You take care of it. You cherish it. You memorize it. You preach it. You share it at the filling station. You share it at the grocery store. Get it out some way, somehow. Live it. Maybe you may be the only Bible they read. Bethany, I remember she, when she, before she's married, yeah, I mean like, what, eight years ago when she was working for Taco Bell. She hadn't said much yet about Christ, and somebody came up, I mean, maybe, maybe nothing at the time, came up and said, why are you different? <laughs> you know, they recognized that her language and her conduct was different. And so, how can this be? How can this be that he pronounces a blessing on those who die? We go to the next phrase. Three. There's a condition. Right? It says, How blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The certainty of the blessing. Secondly, the irony of the blessing. Third, the condition of the blessing. It says, How blessed are those who die in the Lord. If it didn't have that phrase on, there, there would be no blessing. It would be a curse indeed. It would be terrible indeed. But there is this phrase on here. Die in the Lord. Do you know? I, I hope you know. I believe you know. This morning that there's only two categories. Only two categories of humanity, right? Those who are in Christ and those who are not. 
those who have been born twice, and those who have only been born once. Those who are, have their sins forgiven, and those who are still in their sins. Those who are, uh, those who are still natural men, as opposed to those who are spiritual men and women. And so there's two categories. You need to ask yourself this morning, am I in Christ or not? Have I got a vital union with Him or not? Have I been hooked up to Christ or not? Am I in the flesh or am I in the Spirit? You better ask. You better make sure of it. Don't leave anything uncovered. Make sure that Christ is in you, without which you're a reprobate headed for hell. There's, uh, there's two ways you can die. You can die in the Lord or you can die in your sins. Jesus said repeatedly in John chapter 8 that if you die in your sins, what? I can't remember it either. <laughs> John eight twenty four. Yeah, therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. And uh, verse 21, it says you'll die in your sins, and uh, you will not, uh, you'll not be able to be where I am. You die in your sins, you perish. And uh, people die, I've heard, in, you know, you have people die in a car, they die in a house, they die in a hospital, they die in a manure pile, terrible ends. But you do not want to die in your sins. And so you want to be sure that you can die, that you'll be dying in Christ. That your sins are forgiven, your iniquities are pardoned, that you know Christ, and that heaven is your home. Your citizenship is in heaven. And uh, glory, glory, glory waits you and Emmanuel in Emmanuel's land. Do you know that your sins are forgiven? It is possible for that to happen. And it is possible you to know it. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I believe the Bible teaches infallible assurance. Don't you? So this is the condition. Number four, let's look at the explanation and the essence of this blessing. It says here in verse 13 that they may rest from uh, their labors for their deeds follow with them. Why is it such a blessing? Well, it, uh, so much could be said these two things are said. It says that they will rest from their labor. They will rest. And you can more appreciate that if you put it in light of what was just said about the wicked. It says up here in verse 11 that they have no rest day and night. You know, sometimes when you're sick, if you don't get any rest at night, you get it in the daytime. But here it says they have no rest day or night. One time I was driving home, feeling it, and I thought about this. And I mean, for ever and ever and ever, their suffering will not stop. Do we believe it? We hardly do. But it says we will rest from our labor. There is things that are described about our heavenly future. I mean, it says where the Lord calls it sleep. And that has been no small comfort to me. I've gone to sleep many times. I'm not a stranger to sleep. Sleep is okay. <laughs> and so it's like the Lord's wanting to tell us, it's all right. <laughs> you know, sleep in the Lord. Asleep in Jesus. It's called home, at home with Christ. 
immortality begins. And so here is an explanation. They shall rest from their labors. I ask you today, are you, are you doing, are you doing, uh, are you working, laboring for Christ? Yeah, it's, it's all right to go to work eight hours and uh, as a doctor, as a janitor, that's all right. It's not that that doesn't count. You're doing that work as under the Lord, right? You're doing the work as under the Lord. And, and yet over and above that, the, uh, I, the, I ask, are you, are you specifically laboring to get the truth out? Are you specifically laboring for souls? That when you come to the end, you'll feel some relief. I've labored for Christ. I've labored for souls. I've labored to get the truth out. I've sacrificed. I've expended myself. And uh, therefore I look forward to resting from my labors. It says that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. It says here their deeds will follow with them. Think of it. I mean the least little thing you do. A cup of cold water. I mean, our idle words are going to be judged. And so every good word, every deed you do, it is not in vain. And therefore, we ought to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For knowing your labor is not in vain in Him. Get at it, brethren. Keep on, brethren. Your labor is not in vain. Your deeds will follow. Think of it. The Lord Jesus Christ not only saves us, He saves us totally apart from our works, but then He gives us a work to do, graciously gives us a work to do, and said, I'll reward you for it. And He says, the sufferings of this present time is not even worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. It says, our, our momentary light affliction, it works for us. It works for us. I like things that work that produce, that are effective. And the Lord said it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Put your finger on it. Put your, put your soul on it. Count on it that is true. And be, apt to be about the Lord's work. Night is coming when man can work no more. You better do it now. Finally and last, we come to an encouragement that is given us in this beatitude, in this blessing. It says right before, in verse 12, let's not miss it. It says, Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Where is the perseverance of the saints? And sometimes these words are put in there to where you don't know if he refers to the verse preceding or the verse following. And I think it refers to both. And so, what is it that will keep you persevering and steadfast and immovable and abounding and pressing on and staying true? And what is it that will keep you from being, from being swayed by the world, swayed by sin? It's the previous verse. It says that they'll be tormented for their sins day and night. Yeah, there is a judgment coming. There is a great day of God in which everything is going to be brought to light. God's going to judge uh, us for the deeds we did in our body, whether good or bad. We're going to have to give an account to God. And we don't want to be standing. We don't want to be there. And so, not only that, but you, you, see, the, you see the unbeliever. And you see him prospering. You see him fat in the thigh. His eye is bulging. He doesn't have any problems. He's getting along quite well. He's handling life quite well. He's happy in the morning. He's happy at night. He's got his food to the full. His belly is fat. And he's not being chastened every morning. He's not being scourged. And it looks like he's getting along all right. And he's got his, you know, he's got his treasure all right. But he's here on earth. 
and you see you see the latter end of the wicked and you realize that God put their feet in slippery places you realize judgment is coming for that man and you real you say no sir sin is not worth it I'm not going to give in I'm not going to go that way I'm not going to side off with him I'm not going to envy the sinner I'm going to keep on with Christ I'm going to stay away from sin I'm going to abhor the world my citizenship is in heaven I'm not going to be earthly minded I'm going to live for Christ live for eternity my home's not here it's there and I'm putting all my eggs in one basket and so you know that will keep you persevering and then the other side of it is verse 13 yeah you'll rest from your labor and your deeds will follow with you the Lord's not going to pass you by it's worth it it is worth it you think I you it is possible to do things for Christ and you suffer loss for it if I wouldn't have done that it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have sacrificed for Christ it wouldn't have happened it looks like I'm disadvantaged because I <laughs> because I did that or or the other for the Lord and don't believe it yeah do not believe it Jesus did the will of God and it killed him it got him dead and uh, look at his example look at his example now highly exalted with a name that is above every name and uh, and uh, for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross he despised the shame remember brethren God is not going to be ashamed to call you his people if you're living for the heavenly city if you're living for the heavenly country he's not going to be ashamed to call be called your God to identify with you to own you and say well done good and faithful servant and he'll say I know you Peter I know you and Mark I know you and Tim I know you and and uh, instead of saying depart from me I never knew you and so Lord Lord Jesus he's able to reward us he is able to make up he's able to make up for anything everything we've ever done and and say come enter into the joy of your Lord brethren here we are here here we are this morning we had a little taste of the powers of the age to come we sang those songs and didn't you feel it didn't you feel it it's a yeah. I uh, can hardly go on singing. You can hardly, there's such glory there. Christ, Christ, He is everything for Him, all for Him. He deserves it all. He gets it all. I want to do all for Him. I want to be all for Him. I want to finish well. I want to be on the stretch for God. And you come to the end, and I'm telling you, brethren, one thing you don't want to be, one, one thing, one, that you don't want to have around your house. One thing you don't want to have around your heart is sin. One you just contraband. You especially come to the end. And you want a pure heart. You want a clear conscience. You don't want to have sin dabbling around, hanging around your head. You don't want to be messing with it. You, you don't want to be struggling with sin. You you want to come to the end with victory over sin. Where it's just, where you've got dominion, where you've got victory. You know, you're not being defeated. You're not fiddling around with it. And that's where you're going to boast. That's where you're going to find your joy unspeakable and full of glory. Wow. Oh, we've been given a taste of the powers of the age to come. It says taste in Hebrews chapter 6. You better believe it. Just a taste. And, uh, and if we've just been given a taste, how much more there is. The streams of earth I've tasted. Far deep, more deep I'll drink above. And so, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. That's it. That's the ultimate. Unless the Lord comes first. And we go without dying. What has, what has the Lord done for us? That we, that we 
I will conquer the grave. Amen. The Lord bless you. It's a privilege to share the word of God with you. Thank you for praying for me. I will pray. I pray for you. The Lord bless you and make you all burning and shining lights in this great and exceeding and wicked city called San Antonio. You don't need to worry about going to the jungle somewhere. Here's your jungle. (laughs) Press on. My love to you. My love to you. Farewell. (laughs) Oh. Goodbye. Uh, There's no goodbye. (laughs) We'll see you in a little while. You won't be far behind me. (laughs) 